this is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Small Things That Matter. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. This webinar and excerpt focuses on video editing, specifically organizing and backing up media, optimizing preferences, and the other small decisions you make at the start of a premiere or Final Cut project that can make a big difference down the road. Let's start first with media organization, specifically how to organize media. You always want to move media to long-term storage before importing it. You want to never import media directly from removable media. And the reason is they record the path. The path is the name of the volume, the storage device that holds the media, and every folder between the volume name and the file name, and then it ends with the file name. If you put in removable media, it remembers the name of that camera card or the name of that, that removable storage that you put in, which means if you ever need to recapture it, the NLE will put up a sign and say, please insert camera card 23 or removable media X26. And if you can't, it won't allow you to re-import it. Basically, you're trapping yourself. So what you want to do instead is you want to transfer all of your media to wherever it's going to live for the duration of the edit and then import it because then the path name will be correct and your NLE can find it whenever it needs it. You want to make a point to store projects, render, and cache files. Now project in terms of Premiere and libraries in terms of Final Cut. You want to store them on fast storage because the NLE is constantly referring to cache files, constantly referring to library instructions, constantly updating itself on a second-by-second -second basis with work files that are stored inside that master container, the library or the project. Now, single camera media doesn't require fast storage. Even if you had a slow hard drive that only transferred data about 200 megabytes a second, that's still fast enough to support every flavor of HD and every flavor of 4K media for the purposes of playback and editing. It's not fast enough for multicam. For multicam, you're going to need fast storage. I mean, yes, you can for two or three cameras, store that to a hard disk and you'll be okay. But more than that, the problem of latency comes in. Latency is the time it takes for the hard disk heads to move from file one to file two. While it's measured in milliseconds, it's still longer than nothing. The more files that you're playing at the same time, the more angles, the more that latency becomes important because now you're not jumping between two files, you're jumping between four or eight or ten, and suddenly the time it takes for those heads to move from one spot of the hard disk to another and still stream all that media in real time becomes really challenging. So if you're doing a multicam edit with two or three cameras, a hard disk or a hard disk grade will be fine. But if you're doing a multicam edit with more than, say, four, five, or six streams, you'll want to get an SSD because SSDs have zero latency because there's no mechanical parts that move across the drives of a disk. If you need more capacity, an SSD RAID becomes your friend. But if you just need speed, something like a, a Samsung T7 or an OWC Envy Pro FX, both of which are NVMe, which is a form of an SSD, NVMe SSDs, which provide speed that are measured in the thousands of megabytes, which is the kind of speed you need to really provide uh, the support for multicam editing. If you're shooting camera cards, a much better way to work is to take the camera card, create a folder on your storage, that's named however you want. I don't care what you call it. The name of the folder does not matter. Then you select everything, not just the media on the camera card, but every file, every folder, Command A, and copy it into that permanent folder stored on your hard disk. There's two reasons for this. The first we've already talked about, which is that your NLE will track the path name of where your media is stored, and you don't want the removable media as part of the path name. But the second is that metadata is stored in other folders than a media folder, especially if you're working with any of the AVC flavors, AVC HD, for instance. There, you need not only the file containing the media, but you also need a second folder which has got metadata and timecode and other elements of the file that are needed for 
the best results when you're editing, whether it's Premiere or Final Cut. Another question that a lot of us struggle with is what should we back up and where should we put it? Media files, no matter how many times you edit them, media files never change. So once you've got them backed up, you never need to back them up again because even as you go through all of your edits and revisions, the source media remains unaltered. Libraries for Final Cut and projects for Premiere are backed up automatically by the NLE itself. So you don't need to make a special case for backing up your libraries. You can if it makes you feel better, but it isn't necessary. Remember, when, you, when Premiere and when Final Cut make a backup, it's only backing up the instructions on the edit. It doesn't back up the media. So you're responsible for backing up your media. The NLE will take care of backing up its own instructions. Render files, you don't need to back up at all. If a render file is deleted, the NLE will automatically rebuild it if it becomes needed and will ignore it if it isn't. The same thing with proxy files. If you delete a proxy file, it can easily be rebuilt. These are files which are derived from your camera masters and if they're needed, can easily be derived again. So you don't need to waste storage on backing up render files or backing up proxy files because the software itself will create them when they're needed. When it comes to things like preferences, settings, and workspaces, this is part of your time machine backup, and frankly, I wouldn't worry about it. It's also easy to recreate. If you think about it, resetting preferences takes a matter of five or six minutes, and creating new workspaces is not necessarily that difficult, though I will show you in Premiere where they are stored in a folder you can back up if you want to take your settings or keyboard shortcuts or workspaces from one machine to another. They're stored in the Profiles folder, and I'll show that to you in a couple of minutes. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Small Things That Matter. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 357. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.